Hi, uh, my name is Josh Smith. I'm a senior principal engineer with Sci5. And today I wanted to give a little bit more detail about um, this P550 processor, which has come up in a, a couple of Sci5's talks um, earlier today. Um, so the Sci5 P550 was made generally available earlier this year, in July of 21, and it's our first um, high-performance out-of-order application processor. So <clears throat> some of the, I guess, metrics and um, that we've been measure or we've been announcing both in uh, presentations earlier today and in some of our um, press releases are about the performance or PPA uh, numbers that we've been achieving. So for this uh, July 21 release, um, the P550 has been hitting about 8.7 second 2K6 per gigahertz, which we've been comparing uh, favorably, as in we're doing better than something that's Cortex-A75 class in terms of performance. Uh, in terms of frequency, we've been targeting the TSMC 7 nanometer uh, process, and we're getting uh, just uh, in-house implementation around 2.5 gigahertz. And this is all within an area of less than 0 0.4 millimeters squared. Um, so there, I have a little bit more uh, information about comparisons with uh, like the Cortex-A75 and some other slides. But from a very high level, um, it's a 10-stage um, integer pipeline, 13-stage load store or load pipeline, um, fully out of order. Uh, it's three, three wide decode, rename, and dispatch. Uh, the peak issue rate is actually higher than three, given the number of functional units. Um, and there's a lot of different applications that this, uh, this core would be um, applicable to. So from a high level, uh, the microarchitecture at a glance, uh, like I mentioned, the integer pipeline goes through 10 stages, starting from the F1 stage, which is the first fetch stage for reading instructions out of the instruction cache, all the way to the right back of simple integer instructions. The load store pipeline is um, a little bit more complicated because the load, uh, the load instructions have to go through um, not just a single cycle of execution, but address generation, looking up the tag and data arrays, so the, the, opti or the, the lowest load uh, latencies for the pipeline would be uh, 13 cycles instead of 10. Uh, for people that are uh, familiar with, um, I guess, out of order execution or out of order CPU architectures, uh, this diagram, the block diagram that we have here is gonna look uh, pretty, pretty um, textbook. But basically, uh, the instruction flow would be from the left uh, part of the diagram to the right part. So all the way in the left in the fetch unit, we have um, this branch prediction block, which includes an advanced Tage style conditional branch predictor, along with another Tage style um, indirect target predictor and a return address stack. There's also a pretty, uh, there's also pretty quick single cycle uh, zero bubble predictor used for predicting um, targets, like a branch target buffer. The level one instruction cache in P550 is uh, 32 kilobytes, four-way set associative, but um, the, the code base or the generator that we use to come up with a specific instance of P550 is very configurable. So things like structure sizes, cache sizes are configurable. Um, the first level instruction TLB sits at 64 entries. Um, it's... Uh, so that's going to that's going to take care of the first level address translation, and it's backed up by a shared second level TLB uh, that's shared between the instruction and data side uh, that sits at currently 512 entries. And also, there's a hardware page table walker which can support uh, a single outstanding table walk uh, at a time. So once the instructions are fetched out of the instruction cache, uh, they'll go through a series of uh, queues for um, picking out the instructions in the fetch stream and then um, taking those individual instructions and sending them through decode, register renaming, where we remap the architectural registers to a physical register file, um, and then sending them through dispatch to steer the instruction to the correct execution unit. So the P550 is capable of both single precision and double precision floating point. The floating point execution unit actually has uh, two um, full uh, execution pipelines. Uh, so we can support two uh, even two floating point multiplier, two FMAs per cycle. 
Um, the, the integer execution side uh, actually has three, inter three integer pipelines, and it can resolve up to one branch per cycle. So, um, and then the load store execution side, which has level one um, data cache, which is also 32 kilobytes and four-way set associative, can support up to one load and one store per cycle. Um, and so part of our design discipline for the P550 from the very beginning of the project was to come up with something that was very area efficient. And this will be highlighted a little bit on the, uh, the next slide. Oh, and the P550 also supports the compressed instruction extension, so 16 and 32-bit instructions. Uh, this helps reduce the uh, pressure on the size of the iCache by itself. Um, so when we were doing some compar uh, competitive comparisons of the P550 against some of the ARM available cores, um, originally we were actually shooting for performance parity with the A72, but it turns out that um, through more optimization we were able to beat even our own internal targets and uh, compare even favorably against the Cortex-A75. But the really interesting point is that when you look at the like spec in 2K6 per gigahertz uh, per millimeter squared, we're actually coming up at about three times the performance density. Um, and given our pretty aggressive load store unit where we can essentially execute all loads in stores, um, or we, we can reorder all loads in stores uh, with each other, um, we're able to get some very substantial memory copy performance. So we're actually, um, the P550 is able to uh, sustain up to more than 20 gigabytes per second of copy performance um, through the L3. Uh, so the other architectural features that the P550 supports, um, so it's RV64 GBC compatible, which means it supports um, memory atomics, hardware multiply divide, and B is for the bit manipulation extensions. So that's something that we've added. Um, um, and then in a follow-on release, so the, the July release of P550 did not support the hypervisor extension, but the follow-on release that's coming up in the near future uh, will support hardware virtualization through the hypervisor extension. Um, and then there's a lot of other things that kind of exist outside of the core itself um, that um, are very configurable and allow uh, customers to choose uh, performance levels or whatever hardware support is necessary or is uh, applicable for them. So, in terms of virtual memory support, it supports both both SV39, SV48 um, uh, memory management. <coughs> the P550 does have a private level two cache, um, and through our shared uh, composable level three cache, uh, there are some interesting features there like cache stashing. Um, so we have a pretty uh, sophisticated level one and level two hardware prefetcher, and um, the P650, which was announced separately, actually improves uh, very greatly even beyond that. And in terms of security and debug, uh, so we have the Sci-5 Shield branding of our um, security IP, which uh, P550 supports as well, and also a full hardware cryptographic accelerator, which um, again, sits kind of outside of the core, but it's something compatible with P550. Uh, and P550 also does support pretty advanced um, instruction trace and debug capabilities and also um, hardware performance monitors uh, events. Uh, so one thing that we're also uh, working on and uh, have, have finished the development of is uh, some more extensive power management, which includes things like uh, power gating, which I think is also going to be in the follow-on release. Um, and then there's also some software control over um, dynamic power management through uh, dialing back the performance of the core. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, the follow-on to P550 is P650, which is uh, expected to have about roughly 50% higher performance than P550. And this is through major improvements in the pipeline by making it wider better branch prediction, a more aggressive memory system and hardware prefetching. And there's also improved supports for larger core counts um, through uh, multi-cluster implementations. Some other features that are being added are SAR, uh, the Sci-5 World Guard, which could be seen as something similar to, but we think better than like, a, at least in some ways, ARM Trust Zone. 
we're also adding support for um, connecting to Amba ACE uh, fabrics, and also will support hardware virtualization. Um, so I think I'm at about the end of my time. Uh, and for the, we do actually have an FPGA uh, demonstration at our booth over here with uh, the P550 core loaded onto the FPGA and then interacting with the FPGA through our Freedom, US, or Freedom Studio software development environment. Um, so I think that's all I have right now.